Neo Stock Isn't Tesla is the title of today's presentation. And we used this title because quite a few investors compare Neo versus Tesla when really these are two different animals. Now, this video presentation is a follow up from a piece that we already did analyzing Neo Stock. And you don't need to have watched that uh, to benefit from this presentation, but it will certainly help give you a little bit of. Um, background to the story, in particular, the growth of electric vehicles in China, which is what we went to explore in Shanghai for a number of days and speaking with these various automakers and trying to learn about the competitive environment. Now, we're going to start with some Asian humor. So I recently heard a variation of this joke in the small country of Eritrea, and I was surprised. I've heard it all over the world. And I was surprised to uh, hear it in a place that is um, relatively confined from the outside world. They don't have uh, internet that works there. It's kind of the North Korea of Africa. So I looked into the background of this joke. It originated in Japan. The Chinese copied it, and it's uh, spread around the world ever since. It goes something like this. So men's happiness would be marrying a Japanese wife hiring a Chinese cook, having a French mistress, employing a British butler, and living in an American home. Whilst a man's misfortune might be marrying an American wife, hiring a British cook, having a Chinese mistress, employing a French butler, and living in a Japanese house. These all play on stereotypes. I might point out the comment there about Chinese mistress refers to how high maintenance they are. So typically, uh, they'll require you to um, pay for their house and vehicle and whatnot. And having a mistress, so I'm told, in China is actually um, is culturally normal and um, considered to be a sign of wealth for obvious reasons. Well, the Chinese car, uh, I've heard that mentioned in some flavors of this joke where they exchange Japanese car for Chinese car. And you wouldn't do that anymore because the Chinese are now dominating the world of electric cars. And a lot of what they're producing uh, seems to be very high quality. And uh, even Mr. Musk himself has praised the Chinese for being very hardworking and developing some um, formidable vehicles to compete with Tesla. So how did China come to dominate the world of electric cars? Well, this article by MIT Tech Review does a good job of explaining how China became a world leader in making and buying electric vehicles. So in the last several years, they went from 1.3 million electric vehicles sold annually to 6.8 million in 2022, which was the eighth consecutive year in which China was the world's largest market for EVs. 80% of those vehicles sold in China, or 5.44 million, were produced by Chinese firms. To put that number in comparison, the U.S. only sold about 800,000 electric vehicles in 2022. So our first video on NEO stock primarily looked at the heavy competition they face, anywhere from 90 to 300 electric vehicle manufacturers, depending on which source you look at, and certainly 300 different models available for consumers to choose from. NEO is targeting a niche segment, the luxury SUV segment in particular, though they've also expanded into offering sedans. And we concluded in that first video that success for NEO would come down to their decision to employ swappable batteries on their vehicles that will either make them or break them. So here's an article by Tesla Rati, which talks about how Tesla's Model Y is now undercutting rivals from Xpeng and Neo in China. So even when the Tesla Model Y was priced at a very notable premium, it was still outselling local competitors. Well, now that Tesla's implemented this round of price adjustments, they're now cheaper than homegrown rivals like the Xpeng G9 and Neo's ES6. Now, we're going to cover Tesla in China in a future video, so make sure you subscribe right now to our channel so you don't miss that video. But the problem for Neo here is that one of the world's most excess successful electric vehicle companies is now competing with them on price. Here you can see a couple of interesting charts. The first one on the left here shows the total number of premium SUVs sold in China in January through April of 2022. And you can see 
Tesla Model Y outpacing names like Mercedes, Benz, BMW, Audi, Li Auto, which happens to be a uh, firm that's traded, Chinese firm traded in the United States that we'll probably cover in a future piece. And then three up from the bottom there, you can see Neo and their ES6. Well, now look at the chart in the lower right. The best selling premium SUVs in China in November of last year. Look at how the Tesla Model Y has accelerated ahead of all the competition. Could that be because of the price cuts? Well, this chart was produced a month after that article that talked about how the price cuts would allow for Tesla to start uh, out competing other premium SUVs. And when you look at Neo versus Tesla, so they're obviously uh, Neo is competing only in the luxury segment whilst Tesla offers more of a range. Now, if you're selling scale like BYD is, you expect tight margins. BYD actually has better margins than Neo. But if you're selling, selling luxury, you expect wide margins. Well, Gross margins for NEO are moving in the opposite direction of Tesla, which means they're moving in the wrong way. We'll take a look at that. Um, NEO operates in a single market, though they're soon going to be expanding to Europe, and they have far more competition in that major market, whilst for Tesla, they're selling globally already. And the biggest difference between NEO and Tesla and just about every other EV manufacturer out there is that NEO uses swappable batteries. So we try to keep this very simple when we think about the swappable battery going forward. What are the benefits? So the benefits are mainly for the consumer. So quicker charge times, slower depreciation for the vehicle. So every time you swap that battery out, you could potentially be putting a more advanced battery technology into your vehicle. Cheaper operation. So every buyer of a NEO vehicle gets four swaps if they take home the free wall charger or six swaps if they don't. They also have the option to lease the battery as a service, which half of the Chinese, Neo's Chinese customers do. We'll talk a little bit more about that. It's the point of contention for a, a popular short report. Um, the question we had here was about how battery swap station infrastructure should be considered as a part of cost of goods sold, since that's something that accompanies every vehicle that's sold. Can running a swapping operation prove to be economically viable, or is it just a drag? So when you think about it, it should be a fixed cost that decreases as NEO scales, like NEO houses. Uh, similarly, it should decrease if NEO's sales or increase if NEO's sales decline. So that's potentially a problem. Now, when you look at gross margins for NEO, they've started moving in the wrong direction. So four years ago, they were negative. Then they started climbing upwards close to 20%. And more recently, last year, they're around 10%. The problem here is that they don't have a lot of wiggle room to work with when there's loads of overhead, such as their Neo houses, which are spread throughout Shanghai in expensive um, real estate. They have Power Mobile, which are vans that go around charging Neo vehicles. They have somewhere around 300 of those. And a valet service will come and pick up your vehicle and uh, get it swapped or charged for you. Again, nice features to have if you're a customer, but really creating this uh, business around uh, a lot of overhead. Now, Tesla can compete on price because of their strong gross margins. And Musk once said that manufacturing was Tesla's biggest secret weapon. Now, the conclusion to reach here is that Neo is under attack by one of the most successful auto manufacturers ever, plus possible pressure, as we noted before, from the BYD Song series. Now, let's talk briefly about the short report that came out and it noted this diagram pretty much spells it out. So the most important part of an EV is the battery cells, which make up about 40% of the cost of a vehicle. That's why this is significant. So the arrangement here is that NEO has this subsidiary that they funded that other firms have funded as well. And half their sales, which account for the battery as a service where the customer is leasing the battery, that's all conducted through this subsidiary. So what? Well, that's kind of the question because when you consider some of the complexities in China, and here's an example, this is what I did my thesis on, uh, it's the Chinese 
shadow banking system, which companies, big and small, involve themselves with, and it's more or less just black market banking. Some have described it as a house of cards that could fall any time. So when you look at the risks inherent to the Chinese financial system, those seem to uh, make what this short report uh, is pointing out to be rather insignificant. Now, what we liked was that Neo, as any firm should, responded uh, in, in numerous press releases to this short report, and they did, um, as you would expect them to do, or you would hope they would do, is they hired a well-regarded forensic accounting firm that is not the company's auditor. Well, that's good. Auditor certainly not going to be capable of, of evaluating this stuff. You want an independent group, and that's what they did. The independent committee concluded that these allegations were not substantiated. Again, uh, you take that for what it's worth. But a Deutsche Bank analyst also put out a research piece on this, talking about how this is a common practice, the idea being that this entity appeals to a different type of investor. So essentially, instead of aggregating these two offerings, you're really creating a... Um, uh, one plus one equals three sort of situation where you're unlocking the value of this other type of investment vehicle. Now, we're far more interested in the economics of the battery swapping operation than we are in the financing aspects. Here's a picture of a second generation swap station that we took in Shanghai where all the process is automated without staff intervention. And the question that is raised around battery swapping being the future or not, uh, that's pointed to by a lot of neo bulls, And that's really what we believe it comes down to. Now, the argument for swapping in China is that their Ministry of Industry Information, a major supporter of battery swapping, has released the global auto industry's first standards for swapping technology in 2021. This was taken from that aforementioned Reuters piece. And that four companies, you have Neo, Geely, a battery swap developer called Alton, and state-owned oil producer Sinopec say they want to establish 24,000 swap stations across the country by 2025, up from 1,400 today. Now, specialists are cautioning that that will only work if batteries can become standardized. Otherwise, who's going to use those swapping stations? You need multiple companies to be able to use these swapping stations. Now, if Beijing were to mandate battery swapping, that's uh, anything can happen in China. But if that were to happen, who would benefit? Well, it would probably be firms like Cattle, which this is taken from a research piece that I'll link to in the description of this video, which looks at the biggest lithium ion battery producers by 2028 forecasts. And the biggest is expected to be Cattle. They're a developer of swappable technology. So they helped NEO develop those swappable batteries. They sell batteries to Tesla. They fulfill half of China's demand, 30% of global demand. And they recently signed up China's Fa Motor as the first customer for their new EvoGo battery swapping service. And they expect to extend that service to other Chinese automakers. But again, they're going to need domestic firms to accept their standard battery design so they can service model models from multiple brands. This gentleman here from Sino Auto Insight says they can offer a large footprint for swapping stations and a low cost to use those stations. And that this other company, Alton New Energy, is working with automakers to develop standardized batteries. And they're going to work with Sinopec to install these swapping stations at 30,000 gas stations in China by 2030. So ask yourself this. If other automakers adopt this swapping technology, what does that do to NEO's competi competitive advantage? Now, NEO has said they would consider offering swapping services to other auto manufacturers, which is quite interesting. But the arguments against swapping, so pretty much everybody has said it won't work. Tesla dismissed the alternative path as riddled with problems and not suitable for wide-scale use. Volkswagen considered but avoided swapping due to advances in fast charging and the lower costs of non-swappable batteries. That first part is very important, and multiple readers brought this up. Fast charging will continue eroding the benefits of swapping. So it gets quicker and quicker time to charge your vehicle versus swapping. And also auto manufacturers, it's not expected that they'll all be able to agree on a standard. 
too much infrastructure has been put in place so that if it was early days, perhaps mandating a swappable infrastructure might have made a lot of sense. But now we're too committed for that to happen. So the conclusion here that we've reached regarding NEO swapping is that the competitive advantage will erode over time while dragging down their margins. The, the feature alone will not carry vehicle sales for them. You can see that now. Isn't the point of offering swapping to sell more vehicles? Well, it doesn't seem to be working, especially now that Tesla has lowered their prices and that's put a lot of pressure on NEO. Now, the question that we ask ourselves is, is NEO the best way to play China electric vehicles? Well, I took this picture outside my hotel in Shanghai, and it says there, build your dreams. That's what BYD stands for. And BYD is now the dominant electric vehicle producer in China. That was a gorgeous, gorgeous vehicle there. And that's one of the firms that we want to look at. We want to look at Tesla in China, Xpeng being a way that U.S. investors can access that market along with Lee Auto and New. So these are videos that we have planned. Make sure that you're subscribed so you're alerted when we produce these. Now, just to conclude, those who want to invest in NEO need to look past the VI structure risks. I'll put a link to the piece we did entirely around those risks in the description of this video. Now, we invest in leaders. NEO isn't a leader, so we wouldn't be interested. Even if we could look past the VI structure risk, we believe swappable batteries don't provide enough competitive value and they act more as a headwind and that China's EV market certainly seems like a compelling investment thesis. It's absolutely exploded. It's still early days. And perhaps BYD and Tesla are the most interesting ways to play that. But we'll take a closer look at that in future videos. So I put up another video here that you might want to watch in the meantime. But before you watch that, please click our logo on the right. Subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.